Hey everybody, it's Lars here. Welcome to OMAD 3 Domination. Today I'm gonna make oxtail ragu. So you can see here I have uh, the oxtail. I got about seven pieces of this. And then the tomatoes, there's gonna be this uh, San Marzano tomatoes that I have that's uh, imported from Italy, which is interesting because tomatoes are from the New World, America, et cetera, the Western Hemisphere. So it seems like they have good soil over there. And I'm gonna make an instant pot. So the Instant Pot has the advantage of cooking it faster than it would on a, a, a stove or like in the oven or a slow cooker. It does it in about an hour uh, as opposed to four hours. Uh, the oxtail, the meat is tough, so it takes a while to break down and become tender enough to, so you can kind of serve it in a sauce. So uh, let's get, get to it. Um, I use Kalima sea salt here. I buy it online. Um, came highly recommended and it's made in, um, in Mexico. Uh, you know, hand, whatever, hand harvested and such. And pepper. How you doing over there? I had the Instant Pot on saute setting and on hot. I'm going to put those in, let them sear for about four minutes per side. Now, number one rule, you don't want to crowd them so they steam. That's not good. So maybe I'll just squeeze in one more. Please don't steam. There you go. And I got three left. So this oxtail ragu recipe is from a book called the uh, Instant Pot Cookbook. Electric Pressure Cooker Cookbook. Uh, the recipe calls for 13 pieces of oxtail. I bought seven, and this is one of the things I always do. I always buy the ingredients and then decide what to make. So a little bit of a pro tip for you. Look at the recipe first, go out and buy the ingredients. I kind of do it in reverse just because I get excited at the moment and I didn't have the book with me. All right, it's been in there for a few minutes. Let's take a look. Okay, fairly browned. I mean, I would like a little bit more browning. But guess what? Things need to happen. This poor baby, this one's deformed, but you know what? It's probably gonna taste the best. Put that one over somehow. Okay, I have a jar of whole peeled tomatoes in this bowl. And you know, if you don't like cooking, try doing something new, like squeezing tomatoes like this to break it down. And just be careful, do it slowly, right? Interesting factoid, uh, due to like tariffs and taxes and stuff, uh, they have to add like a basil leaf to it to make it like not just canned tomatoes. It's really weird, I read it a long time ago and I just find it interesting. Now mind you, since I don't have the proper quantity of uh, oxtails, I have too much tomato, so I think I'm just gonna make like a really chunky Bloody Mary uh, out of what I don't use. That's awkward. You see what happens, Larry, when you squeeze too hard? See what happens? Okay, the oxtail is browned and resting. I got the pan there, bunch of butter. It's awkward to do. Once that butter melts, I'm gonna add an onion, two carrots diced and two celery stalks diced. All right. Butter's melted. Just kind of let that, let the water come off that and it's gonna take off the brown bits at the bottom. I'm also gonna add half a cup of red wine to this. I am scaling back the amount of tomato uh, sauce I'm gonna add here, but I'm gonna keep everything else kind of the same just because I don't really mind the extra carrot, onion, and celery, as well as uh, the half a cup of red wine I'm gonna add to this in a second, so. Half a cup red wine. Uh, didn't really measure it, but it'll be fine. It's gonna take a minute, but it's gonna heat up and all that brown stuff at the bottom is gonna, gonna blend in with the wine and the vegetables and it's gonna imbue the entire dish with great meaty flavor. Okay, cook with the red wine for about two minutes until the smell of alcohol goes away. The meat's just waiting. You might remember earlier, I had to scale back this recipe. I've got seven pieces, I'm supposed to have 13. That's what happens when you buy the ingredients and then decide what to make later. It's cooking, I can't smell the alcohol. I've got the tomatoes. So I've got to visually scale back the amount of tomatoes I'm gonna put in here. All right. Everyone loves red pepper flakes. So it says here to add a pinch. And you know, that's one of those ambiguous things. Am I Andre the Giant or am I just like a regular person? So, you know, gotta figure that out. I'll just do like two, three. 
13 dashes. Add the oxtails. All right, just nest them in there. Uh, my favorite kitchen tool is the tongs. You get a lot of manual dexterity and no effing around. Like that. So, let's see. I always take the residual juices and pour them in. Why not? I'm not going to lick the plate. Hey, you guys remember that episode of Three's Company where Jack Tripper, when he was a chef, added too much chili pepper to the sauce and that mob guy loved it, even though he was trying to get him to like go away? Anyway, that might have happened here because I added a lot of chili pepper. You know, one thing this recipe doesn't have is garlic. I'm going to throw in a couple cloves. Why not? Garlic always makes the world a little bit better. I'm in my little special chopping corner here. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna add some garlic. So I got two cloves and how to peel and mince garlic. I always like to have my big knife, a lot of surface space. And you just take the clove and you just kind of whack it. I learned this from Jack Papan. Just get that rough skin off and like that. Now I just have the, just the plain garlic, right? And I'm just gonna, that and then right, you can just kind of do this scrape it a few times sprinkle some salt on it and that really just kind of brings out the uh, the moisture and like that fine mix and then if you want like a paste you just kind of scrape it a few times that's kind of what it looks like after mincing so you get this fine garlic here. Garlic in there. Oops, it's a little tricky. Thing in there, I even scraped the garlic in into the pot. Uh, so I'm ready to go. So how you do this? You just put the lid on and secure it. Everything's harder when using one hand. All right, and then I go to, and every model is different. I go to manual. And then I crank this baby up to 60 minutes. Is it going? Whoops, I went over. Not a problem. So it's on manual. Um, that means it's pressure cooking. Make sure the release valve is on sealing and just hang back and wait. This is the moment of truth, it's about to seal. All right, the Instant Pot is done. I opened it up. I pulled out the oxtails, and as you can see here, if you just look, the meat just kind of give it a you know the meat just kind of comes off there. And I'm just going to separate the meat from the bones, and um, also going to some ground beef cooking. Hey, so I put these babies in for another 20 minutes in the pressure cooker, and now they kind of just fell off the bones. A lot easier, and I just kind of threw the bones in there. It ain't pretty, but the, the meat tastes good. And I'm just going to throw it back in there. It's already the next day. I took the meat off the bones and then I put it back into the sauce. And now I have it cooking here. And, you know, it came out okay. Like, I would definitely not apologize for it if I served it to guests. But uh, if I could do it over again, I would definitely uh, follow the recipe exactly and have a more meat to sauce ratio. You know, it is very saucy, you know, and you can see it here. Like, there's a chunk of meat and it's very tender. I just kind of let them whole. I didn't shred them apart. But I'm gonna serve this with a baked sweet potato and that's just gonna be kind of a low key dinner. So that was OMAD 3 domination. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I was just kind of improvising a recipe after I bought the ingredients. So don't always recommend doing that, but I had fun. Uh, you know, I haven't cooked oxtail in quite a long time and uh, I'm looking forward to doing it again. Uh, so, hey, please like, subscribe, comment. Love to hear your feedback. Uh, it keeps me going and making more videos. OMAD 3 domination out.